Hello my dear sewing friends, it's Alisa here. I'm really happy to see you because today we're going to be talking about a really important topic and that is how to spend less but sew more in 2024. Now as always in all of my videos, I come to you from my personal experience, from the things that worked for me and the things that I learned and today is going to be no exception. <laughs> so I wanted to give you real life actionable advice, the steps that worked for me, things that you will be able to do right after you watch this video. But I also wanted to give you some extra food for thought because hear me out, a lot of times when it comes to creative stuff and a lot of times when it comes to finances and a lot of other things in life, we focus on how, how to do this, how to achieve this, how to get there, but we forget a really great question behind all of that and that is the question why. Once you understand why you do what you do, it becomes a little bit easier to course correct because I know that there's a really strong sentiment in our sewing community that sewing is a very expensive hobby. And at first I wanted to call it a myth, but then I was like, well, it's not really a myth. It can be a really expensive hobby. And I'm sure that a lot of you will agree with me on that, but it doesn't have to be. The last thing I want is that sentiment that sewing is an expensive hobby to really deter you from that and stop you even before you begin. So that's why we're talking about it today. First, let's talk about fabric because obviously fabric is the thing that probably eats up the biggest chunk of any sewing budget. So if you do learn how to use your fabric efficiently, how to make the most out of it, then of course you will need to purchase less and therefore spend less. And here are three things that I do. First, you often see me cut my patterns flat versus on the fold. Now it doesn't always apply, especially when you're using fabric with repeat pattern or geometric print, but if you are working with solid color, then this definitely definitely works because if you do nest your patterns and if you do cut your patterns flat, you will be able to yield more out of your fabric versus when you're cutting on the fold. Now the second thing that I did regarding fabric is that I learned to use the very last bit of it. And of course I'm talking about working with fabric scraps. I think you can clearly see that on my channel. I truly enjoy that. It ignites my creativity. It lets me create more without spending more. Now I understand that sewing with fabric scraps is not for everybody. And before you make your judgment, if you haven't seen what I've been making, I really encourage you to take a look at it because a lot of times people think that clothes made out of fabric scraps will look really funny or just subpar, but you can truly create some beautiful things by using what you have left over from other projects. And here's a really good example. So this hoodie was originally made from two fresh cuts of French terry. Then from whatever was left, I made another shirt for myself and I actually really, really, really love it. And then from the smaller parts, I made a little pair of shorts for my daughter. And I think, and that of course is my personal subjective opinion, but I think that none of them look funny or subpar. And whatever is left after that, you can use in order to make your own homemade bias tape, which I've been doing for years and years and years. And I'll tell you, I love it a ton more than any of the store-bought versions. Next, let's talk about patterns. Now, you might know that I don't buy commercial patterns, but instead, I draft my own. And these actually came with sewing magazines that my mom gave to me as a gift. So I thought, you know what, let's use these as a case study. Now, if you buy a new sewing pattern for every single new sewing make, then yes, it probably does add up very quickly and then sewing truly becomes a very expensive hobby. But if you learn how to hack your sewing patterns, then you will use more of what you already know that works. Let's say you have a dress pattern that you know fits you well, you love the style, you love the details, you love the sizing, then why not use it time and time again by changing just little details like a sleeve or a neckline or the length or the fabric that you're using and get the most out of the pattern that you know and love. As an example, let's go ahead and take a look at these two patterns. Now at first glance, they might look very, very different, but if you take a closer look, you will see that both of them are made using exactly the same base, which is just a simple dress with a darted bodice and a gathered or pleated skirt. And both of them can be modified. Gathers can be made into pleats and pleats can be made into gathers. And then the only difference between those two is the shape 
shape of the sleeve. One either has no sleeve or cap sleeve and the other one has a flutter sleeve. Very easy adjustment. Then of course the neckline, very easy adjustment. And then the third thing is the addition of the little ruffle on the bottom of the skirt. So instead of buying two patterns and spending extra money, you can buy one and then hack it for any of your future makes. Now next tip about how to spend less but sew more is to use thrifted materials for your sewing and also incorporate upcycling. Now currently, as of this very moment, I don't thrift for fabric and the only reason for it is that I have plenty in my own stash that I need to use up, but I do thrift for sewing books. Now if you buy these fresh off the shelf at the bookstore, sometimes these can be so expensive like 30, 40, 50 and 60 dollars and for a good reason because they are a wealth of information. But if you do buy one at the thrift shop, I've been lucky enough to get some of these for 5 or 6 dollars and sometimes even cheaper. And that doesn't have to apply only to sewing books or fabric. You can thrift and find any other sewing notions as well and therefore save money. And when it comes to upcycling, here you don't even have to go thrifting or spend any money at all because I encourage you to go to your closet, open the doors, and I'm pretty sure you will find one, two, three, maybe a dozen garments that you haven't worn in a while and that you would get more use out of if you use them for an upcycle. This way you will have free materials and free fabric to work with and then you will also challenge your creative sewing potential, plus you will free up the space in your wardrobe for all of those future sewing makes. Now interestingly, when I do talk about upcycles, oftentimes I get exactly the same reaction from people as when I talk about creating clothes from fabric scraps. I'm not sure what it is, but oftentimes people think that upcycles are always hideous, are always looking funny, are always subpar, and yes, sometimes they are, but they don't have to be. As I mentioned, use your sewing and creative potential and you can create some really beautiful clothes from the old garments that you already have but no longer wear. Wear. Like for example this blouse, this was also an upcycle. So if you still have a little bit of doubts about creating something beautiful from old clothes, then I will leave a full playlist of my upcycles in the description of this video. So that way you can take a look and find ideas and get inspiration. And I'll tell you this, some of the most fun and enjoyable creative and beautiful garments that I have created were made from the upcycles. Another step on a way to spend less but actually sew more was learn the hard way. And now I don't spend the money just to save. And by that I mean that sometimes we see these really great deals like for example these zippers, you know, buy a bulk pack of 50 zippers and save 10%. And we think to ourselves, wow that's a great deal, I'm gonna get all of these zippers for 10% less, I'm saving money. But actually what we really need to do is to stop and ask ourselves ourselves, do we really need these zippers? How many projects a year do we make with the zipper? Does it matter what length of the zipper or what color of the zipper or what type of the zipper that is? Because mine was an assorted color pack and guess what? I don't use these colors in my sewing at all. And I know it is hard to resist putting all of the stuff in your cart because there are so many cute things when it comes to sewing, right? But I'll tell you this, a few years back I started shopping for sewing supplies with a list. So I would go through all the stuff that I have, make a list of what I need, making sure that I'm not duplicating anything so I'm not bringing anything extra into my sewing space and it makes such a big difference not only money wise but also in the amount of random stuff that you have to manage in your sewing space. So probably one of the most obvious things that I did in order to spend less but actually sew more is that I stopped buying fabric. <laughs> not, not for forever, but for a little while for sure. And I definitely decreased the frequency of fabric purchases. And instead, 
did, I went ahead and I took a really good inventory of what I already had on hand. Because although I don't necessarily have a large stash, it still is really easy to forget what exactly do you have. And then once you go through all of those fabrics, you realize that you definitely have more than you can sew up in a year. And this should be plenty for any of your sewing adventures. And once it started sinking in, I realized that Wow, the hobby of sewing and the hobby of collecting fabric are definitely two separate things. And if one of them, particularly collecting fabric, really takes over, I find that it can really get super overwhelming because when we have too many materials to work with, a lot of us just really shut down because that's extra stuff to manage, extra things to put away, extra things to go through, and that can really steal your sewing joy. So I would stop buying for right now and then just really assess the inventory of fabric that you already have on hand and start from there. Now obviously these are the things that I personally do in order to spend less and keep the budget low. But of course there are many many other things that you can do. So here I sort of want to pass the torch if you do have a really great idea or a suggestion or something that really worked for you. Please don't be shy. Let us know in the comments underneath this video. We would love to hear what you have to say. Now this next step in order to spend less and actually so more might seem a little strange. You might be saying like, what? Did this actually help? And yes, yes it did. Not only to spend less, but also to sew more of what I will actually wear in my real life. Not in my imaginary life. Because I realized that the comparison game for me is really, really toxic. So. I try to stay away from social media, Instagram particularly, because that for me is the most toxic. So from time to time, you will see that I post a picture here and there. But when I do, I don't look at anything else, no reels, no other photos. If you do tag me, I'll take a look at your sewing mix. But other than that, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Same goes for fabric hauls on YouTube. I don't do those at all. I don't watch those, not my cup of tea. And it's okay if that is your cup of tea. But if you do find that you're buying more and more fabric after watching fabric hauls, that might be a good place just to stop and reflect and maybe limit yourself a little bit so that way you don't end up with stacks and stacks of fabric just because of the comparison game. I do, however, once a year, once every two years, do a video about unique fabrics or unique sewing tools that I have purchased, but that's about it. Now after all of these, the best tip and the best advice that I have for you is just to be honest with yourself. And I know it might sound a little weird, but when you do get to know yourself, when you find true and honest answers to the questions like, how much actual time do I have to sew? Do I need all of this fabric? If nobody was watching, would I still make that dress if not for the photos to post on Instagram or other social media? What are the clothes that I actually wear? And are those the clothes that I actually make? And the questions can go on and on and on. The point is that when you find your why, why do you sew? Why do you have that passion? Then I feel that it is a lot easier to manage your budget and to stay within that budget and it's not going to become an issue. From here, I really want you to click on this episode right over here. That's where I take fabric scraps and then turn them into fun and beautiful clothes. So that way you can see how it's done, you can see the process, get inspired, and hopefully get creative as well. So thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you in this video. And until next time, happy thoughtful sewing. Bye.